Hey family, it's Ray and I'm back with another word. I pray that you guys have been blessed and that this word finds you in good spirits. So this word is going to be about kingdom marriages. So as always with any word, they'll take this word back to the Lord and test the spirit and have the Lord speak to you further concerning your individual situation as well as to confirm that this word is for you and make sure that you are aware and that you know what season that you are in. So this word comes from a dream that I had back in September of 2023. And the Lord has been since January and bringing this back up to me. So I'll share the dream with you and then get into, um, actually, yeah, he gave me his word on the 29th of January through an encounter. But I'm going to share the dream first and then I'll walk you through how the Lord began to reveal this word and his message to me. And so for this word in its entirety, we will be looking at the book of Ruth, the full book of Ruth. So yeah, so let me go ahead and get into the dream. So again, I had this dream on September 2023. And um, in this dream, I was in a, a childhood home. And it started out in my room that was mine when I lived in this home. And I was in the bedroom with me and my sister. And I had two piles of clothes on the floor. I was planning on washing them. So my mom came in and she threw a towel on the pile of clothes. And I got annoyed. And I picked it up and threw it off to the side onto the ground. I remember feeling something wet on the towel. I remember she mentioned, you're going to get pregnant. So in this scene, I am in my room again throwing clothes, you know, in piles to get washed, but I'm also packing clothes, um, packing my suitcase and things like that. And so she says, you're going to get pregnant. And then she mentions a fertilizer, which is what the wet substance was, substance was that I felt on my hand when I picked up the towel. I, in the dream though, I brushed it off. Like when she says you're going to get pregnant, I kind of brushed off. Like I'm, I'm going to wash the clothes anyway. And so it goes to a new part where we're still in the room, except, um, me and my sister were like standing over here at the closet and, I can see my only myself in the dream, but I see that my, I'm looking over my shoulder as I'm picking clothes out of the closet by hanger. And so it wasn't a thing where I was just taking everything out, out of the closet and packing it, packing everything to, to go with me. I was like strategically picking clothes out of the closet one by one, almost as if I was making outfits ahead of time. But I was, like I said, I was looking over my shoulder or having a conversation with someone over my shoulder as in like the, the person helping me pick the clothes out. So now it goes to a new scene of me in a brand new home. And in this home, it's like a multi-story multi home. And I remember in the first scene of this house, we were upstairs, me and my sister. This time we were unpacking the suitcases. And I remember her mentioning um, something about a neighbor, like like some like issue or some incident with the neighbor had been resolved. So we ended up walking down the stairs and we walked down the stairs into the living room and it was like an open concept space where, you know, you have the kitchen, you have the living room, like everything is kind of like there's no walls in between. So it was an open concept and I stood there at the bottom of the stairs. I could see around the living room and it was windows all around the living room on every wall. There were windows and all the windows were open. The blinds were open and the sun was just shining through so, so bright. And it was beautiful. Also, the place was beautiful. Like I said, this was a new home. So the, the beginning of the dream started off with me being at home in the home that I, a childhood home, and then I ended up in this new home. So when I saw, I looked around and I saw that the blinds were open and I could see into the backyard and I saw the pretty green grass. I saw people back there tending to the yard. I saw a man on a lawnmower and then there's a woman sitting on the back of the lawnmower in a wedding dress like they're literally going back and forth in the, in the in the yard like this and i could see that they were looking into the window so when i noticed everyone all the people back there in the backyard all the people in the backyard being able to see into the house i got this like nervous feeling and i ran over and i shut all the window all the blinds so i shut the blinds to where i could still like the, the sun could still peer through the the spaces in between the blinds but it was to where I could see out. I could still see into the backyard, but the people who were on, in the backyard couldn't see in. So I remember also walking to the back door now. The back door also has a set of blinds there, but I pulled the blinds up and I had, in order for me to close the window, I had to like push the window out, turn the knob, and then pull the window back in. When I, there was a man standing there, he was standing there with his back to the door. So his, his back was facing the door and he was facing outward. So when I went and I pushed the window open, he turned around as if he thought that I was there to like speak to him or like basically like I, was, I was about to let him in. But instead I pulled, I twisted the thing and pulled the window back shut. And I, again, even on the blinds that were on the door, I shut the blinds to where I could see out and the people in the outside couldn't see in. Now, 
me and my sister are standing here in between the front room and the kitchen and again i'm still feeling anxious so now it's like i was noticing people were around or people could see into the place so the anxiousness that i felt when i noticed it was still there even after i closed the blinds and everything um i still felt the anxiousness and worry about safety um, hence why I closed the blinds and the windows. I thought to lock the door once I saw people in the backyard. Suddenly, my mom walks through the back door, which again triggered the anxiousness. And I remember thinking, I thought I locked the door. I remember hearing, there's a man in this house, which made me feel more anxious. And my sister was trying to reassure me that everything is okay to calm down and that it's safe here. And that was a dream. And so, like I said, I had the dream back in September 2023. And the Lord actually brought this back to me through an encounter and pretty much a breakthrough that he gave me or that I experienced on January 29th of this year. The title of this word is, there's a man in this house, no more heavy lifting or something like that, <laughs> something like that. And so first when he gave me no more heavy lifting and this came to me again through an encounter that I'll share in a second, no more heavy lifting is a phrase um, or heavy lifting means a burdensome or laborious duty, hard work, the difficult part of a task. So back in January, I released a word where I was speaking about me when I was ordering my, my bed and my mattress. The mattress and the bed came like two separate days. The mattress came first. The mattress ended up coming in like three days, which already was unexpected. Um, it came sooner than expected. So now this is the encounter. So on that day, I ended up, I was at work. And so I got home really late. And so I'm like, okay, I told myself to go get the mattress once I got here and i ended up going to the package room and by the time that i get out got, got here from work or get here get home from work the office is already closed so there's no body in the office at all to like help me so basically after hours and so i was going to pick it up out of the mail room and or the package room and when i got in there this mattress is literally it's in a box and then the, the box is literally probably like seven ish feet tall and I'm sitting here trying to grab, trying to get the box onto the cart. The box is just too big. I'm just really, really tired and I'm really struggling with this box, trying to figure if the box is already big and heavy, but also trying to figure out how I'm going to get it onto this, onto this cart and then down to my apartment. And so right when I was just going to give up, like I was tired, it was late. I just got off a, a long shift at work and I had literally, I was probably on my last ounce of everything I had in me. And so... I ended up sitting the box back up against the wall and I'm just like, uh, I'm gonna have to figure it out. Come, come another day, even though I worked the next day too. So it would have been the same thing. I think I worked the next three days. So it would have been the same issue as far as me getting there after hours when there's no one here to like help me get anything down. So right when I get the box stood back up against the wall and I just made up my mind that I'm going to just leave, go take me a shower, go into bed and we'll figure this out another day. Right when I get the box stood up and I'm about to leave out of the door, a man busts through another door, like a back door that, you know, where he can enter into this mail room or this package room. And so when he saw me, he looked over, at, he looked at me, he looked over at the mattress, he looked back at me and he's like, oh, and he says my apartment number. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, I got you. So he goes and he gets a new cart. And then once he gets the stuff on the cart and he does it with such ease and it was so simple for him. Okay, so once he gets it on the car, he asked, is it okay if I bring this down for you? And I said, yeah, and he asked if I just got off work. I was, I'm still in my, I was still in my uniform and everything, but he's like asking if I if I just got off work. And he asked, was it a long day? He's like, yeah, you look white. Okay, so I get here, we get we get the, the mattress in here, we get the package in, I get in the shower. After I get in the shower, I, I, I see my phone and my phone says a missed call 10 minutes ago. So at the time that the call came through was at 7.40. PM and so I looked up 740 and strongs. 740 and strongs means bread, a loaf. So now the, the man who helped me was an employee here who um he doesn't necessarily work in the main office, but they have like concierge who are there to help you after hours when the when the office is closed. But I, I completely forgot about it. I wasn't even thinking about that. Now when we look at bread loaf, divine provision, first off, I want to start with that. Okay, so like I said, when he busted through the door, he came right on time. He came right when I was about to give up. <laughs> he came right when I was about to give up and just walk away. And then he was able to grab the box. He was able to load the box onto a new cart. He was able to go and get a cart. And then he also offered to bring the box to my apartment for me. And then like I said, he says, oh, and he mentions my apartment number. And I'm like, yeah. And so the thing that the Lord highlighted to me about that was 
that in itself, the provision right there, the help already there. Even when I was about to give up, the help was already there right on time, right in my time of need. And he was already expecting me. That's what he highlighted to me. He was already expecting me and he was already expecting me to need help. The Lord knew that I would need help, but even common sense, you would be able to see that oh, this is a seven foot box and I'm gonna need help, okay? The Lord already provided that help. The Lord already had that expectation in that person. The Lord had reminded me of and took me to throughout this message, the book of Ruth. So that was the encounter where the Lord first gave me no more heavy lifting. There's a man in this house. So in that thing, the breakthrough for me in that moment was your helpmate, certain things that you, you need your spouse to fulfill. For me in that situation, it was a physical demand that I needed help with that I literally physically could not do. I tried it and I still needed help. I needed the strength, the physical strength and ability of a man to get done what I needed to get done. And I needed help now in the time I thought I was in here. So in the time, the Lord provided um, another to come and do it for me. But it was just this, that breakthrough in that moment of no more heavy lifting. Like you're no longer going to be having to do things on your own. You will no longer have to be the one where everything, all the labor is work, all the hard work and the duty, everything will have to be on your shoulders. Your helper is coming. Your helpmate is coming. Again, so no more heavy lifting or heavy lifting means a burdensome or laborious duty, hard work, the difficult part of a task. So now I'm going to get into the message. Okay. So he's reminding me of the, you're going to get pregnant and in the fertilizer. Okay. He reminded me of how I was strategically grabbing clothes from the closet and packing my bags and that I had a helper with me who was, who seems to kind of be approving or, or giving her opinion or advising when it came to what clothes I should pick. But also instead of picking from the, the dirty clothes or washing those dirty clothes and then using those clothes to pack my bag, I'm grabbing new clothes off of the hangers in the closet. So those clothes are already clean. Those are new garments instead of instead of old, dirty, used garments, okay? He also highlights to me the new home and also the sun shining through the blinds in it though, that open space. He highlights to me the man is standing at the back door. The vibe that he gave me or the really the word that he gave me was a security guard. So um, a protector, okay? At the end of the dream, it was mentioned, there's a man in this house, okay? And so now I'm going to go ahead and get into the breakdown of each of these highlights. First, I'm going to start with the moving. So this moving, this denotes a move in relationship status as it pertains to kingdom marriages. Um, relationship status from single to married to being in union after being in separation or after being in your singleness period, singleness stage, um, the two becoming one. This could also denote a physical move that is tied to your union. Okay, like Ruth, she ended up leaving her land and headed to a new land, which she did not know. She don't know, know nothing about the land. She didn't know anyone there except Naomi, who she was going back to this land with. Now, in Ruth 1, verse 6, and this also ties back into the, the bread, the loaf, the provision. Okay, so Ruth 1, verse 6, and this was the precursor of them even heading back to the land of Boaz and so it says verse 6 it says then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread and then so now we're going to go down to 16 where this is where Ruth is like vowing to, to, to Naomi that she's not going to leave her but Ruth said entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you for wherever you go I will go and wherever you lodge I will lodge your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die and there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me and more more also if anything but death part you and me. When she saw that she was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. And the woman said, is this, is this Naomi? That was like that precursor again of their move. They were going to a new land. They were in need of supply where the life that they had lived or the place that they had been, essentially like their time was up there. There was nothing left for them. And the Lord was calling them or the Lord is calling you to a new place, to a new land. Now, Naomi didn't, or Ruth didn't know nothing about no Boaz. She didn't know that, that, that when she made this move that 
she would be getting married, that she would be, that she would be finding a new husband. And so for some of you, you've been called to a, new, to, to a new land, whether you just moved or whether you were being prepared and called to move, to make a move, you, you don't know what's there for you. You're leaving everything that you know behind and you don't know what's up ahead. And for some of you, maybe you may be even in need of provision, but you're still putting your faith and trust in the Lord and moving in his word and his obedience to go where he says go, when he says go, to live by his law, his commandments, and just to move in obedience to him and to, to stay by him, to stay connected to him and everything that you do and everything he calls you to do, okay? So now we're going to move to pregnancy, okay? So she mentioned you're going to get pregnant. So this could be a physical pregnancy or a spiritual pregnancy. And she also mentioned a fertilizer. So a pregnancy starts with fertilization. When a woman's egg joins with a man's sperm. Again, of course, this can denote a physical pregnancy, but also it could denote the beginning of your assignment once the two of you have been joined together. Again, this is your union. So fertilization, even the two of you becoming one, a sperm and an egg becoming one. Fertilization, you and your spouse becoming one. Fertilization, and now that you guys are coming together, you are starting, you are embarking on something new. You are stepping into a new assignment. You are stepping into a new chapter. There's something that you guys are going to be birthing together. There's something that you're going to be starting and creating together, but it's going to birth something, okay? So again, you're going to get pregnant. And that could be a physical pregnancy. It could be a spiritual pregnancy. It could be both. And so we're going to go to Ruth 4, 13 through 14. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. So that's the two becoming one right there. And when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception and she bore a son. So again, like I said before, about to treat strategically grabbing the clothes out of the closet and packing, which I pretty much went into that. So you're putting on new garments. You're leaving the old, you're letting the dead lie. You're leaving the old dirty clothes behind and you are picking a fresh clothes. And it may be you're stepping into something new. Um, and you're having helpers, you're having advisors, you're having people who are there to, to instruct you as you are stepping into it. Think about a wardrobe change, literally, when you're changing your style, you may need help when, when you're, like for me, for example, um, I used to be a tomboy, and when the Lord started shifting me into like girly girl stuff, it's hard for me, even now sometimes still kind of hard for me to go shopping for like girl stuff, because like, that's not what I'm used to. So you may, you know what I'm saying? So having help along the way as you are stepping into this new. But let me to Ruth 3. And we're going to start at verse 1. And it says, Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you that I may be, that it may be well with you? Now Boaz, whose young woman you were with, is he not our relative? In fact, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Therefore, wash yourself and anoint yourself. Put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor, but do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. So she went down to the threshing floor and did and did according to all that her mother-in-law instructed her. You may be receiving instructions on what to take, what to leave behind. As you step into your new, you may have helpers along the way as you are stepping into your new, as you are embarking on this move. Again, Naomi, Naomi served as like essentially the voice of the Lord when it came to Naomi, or she served as a vessel that... um. The Lord spoke to when it came to helping Naomi, when it came to leading her, instructing her, and leading her up into her union, into her marriage with Boaz, okay? So uh, the next is, this is going to be a happy, prosperous union. Again, the sun was shining in throughout the new home. Literally, I'm talking about it was just bright, it was just yellow, gold, beautiful, and it was just shining in through the new home to the point where I was just sitting at the bottom of the steps and I was just taking it all in. Even that, the Lord kind of highlighted to me how it started out just in my room at the, the house. So for some of you, you literally are literally leaving home. For others of you, it's just leaving what you know, what, what, what you were comfortable with or what you come from. And you're stepping into something new. But this new is something so much bigger. Again, my room, I was just in my little room versus the new scene after after I packed everything up and I ended up in a new home. The home was huge. It was multi-levels. So I went from a room to a home with a backyard, with the open concept living room kitchen with wraparound windows for the ceiling where this, the sun was just shining through from every angle. The next thing that the Lord highlighted to me from his dream was the man standing at the back door. And like I said, at first he, he gave me the word security guard or like guard. So, you know, with security guards, um, They'll stand outside of the door, they'll stand outside of a room, outside of the room or the home or place where someone is that they are protecting. They stand with their back to the door because they're facing outward so that they can be on, on watch or at watch um, or at attention for oncoming danger. So um, they're kind of like standing guard at that door. 
and it's a protection for you. You're a protector. Protection um, this also can denote the character of your this is going to denote the character of your spouse, but it also is the Lord um like reaffirming that protection, that safety when it comes to your union, when it comes to um yeah, your 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 spouse. So you led me to Ruth two eight through 16 and this also ties back into the bread it also ties back into the provision okay so Ruth 2 verse 8 then Boaz said to Ruth you will listen my daughter will you not do not go to glean in another field nor go from here but stay close by my young women let your eyes be on the field which they reap and go after them have I not commanded the young men not to touch you and when you're thirsty go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn so she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me that I am a foreigner? And Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband and how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and have come to the people whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work and a full reward be, be given to you by the Lord of Israel under whose wings you have come for refuge. Then now I'm going to skip down to 14 and it says, now Boaz said to her at mealtime, come here and eat of the bread and dip your piece of bread in the vinegar. So she sat beside the reapers and he passed parched grain to her and she ate and was satisfied and kept some back. And when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men saying, let her glean even among the sheaves and do not reproach her. Also let grain from the bundles fall purposely for her, leave it that she may glean and do not rebuke her. Okay, so I feel like the character right there the protector the provider let's go back to the bread the provision okay he made a way for her to receive for her to receive food for her to have things made easy for her essentially and he also protected her from rebuke from from embarrassment from shame from people you know mistreating her or anything like that and so i think that is a perfect depiction of your spouses or what the Lord is trying to show us when it comes to our spouses and these men and these men and the, the protective nature, the protective character, but also the safety and assurance for us of for, for the wives of um, security. Again, security, stability, provision. So I mentioned how I walked over to the window and the man was standing there with his back to the window or to the door. And so when I pushed, pushed the window open, I went over to the window with the intent of closing it and closing the blinds. But he seemed to think that I was opening the window to let him in or to speak to him, okay? The way that he turned around was like he was he was thinking like I was initiating, opening up to him in some type of way, okay? And so you may be someone who was very guarded, maybe very um, closed off in this dream, having the blinds open and seeing people outside made me anxious. And I went to close the blinds and lock the doors and windows. I could still see out, but they couldn't see in. The man standing at the back door and turned around when I opened the window seemed to be like he was waiting for me. He seemed to be waiting for me. Okay, so for some of you, your spouse is at your back door, okay? Your spouse is there waiting for you. Um, I don't know if you are in separation or for some of you, you could be together already, but the thing that the Lord is highlighting for you is to let this person in, especially if, that, if, if, if you are who I just described. That's important for you to be able to let this person in. Don't close them out. Okay, you have this protective barrier. Um, that's how you have been protecting yourself or that's how you have had to protect yourself by keeping people at a distance or keeping people closed out like you can see them, but they can't see you, right? And so, um, and I'm the same way, I've been the same way. And so even for me, I know that was for me as well. It's safe, again, it's safe here. It is safe to be vulnerable. It is safe to open your heart up to them. It is safe for some of you, like I said, they're literally there waiting for you to open up, to let them in. Do not close him out. The Lord may have been working on you in part about communication and part like being vulnerable, softening up, softening yourself up, softening up your heart as well to let this person in. It's going to be important when it comes to your union. Now we're going to talk about there's a man in this house. So I heard that at the end of this dream, there's a man in this house. And again, that made me feel anxious too. Okay, so there's a man in this house. And so what the Lord spoke to me was that this could also signify a change for you. Again, hence the anxiousness. Some may not have grown up with a male figure, father, brother, um, in your home. May not have, you may not know what that safety or that protection feels like. For others of you, even if there wasn't many in the house, you still may not have, have, have had that protection. It could be 
toxicity between your parents, it could be abuse, anything like that, but still not knowing what it is to receive or have that safety and protection in a home or that safety and protection from a male figure, okay? So there's a name in this house. The Lord is reassuring in this dream, it's safe here. So after I heard that and I felt really nervous and anxious after hearing that in a dream, um, my sister was like reassuring me, like, calm down, it's safe here, okay? Another thing that the Lord, that the Lord highlighted to me again, back to the windows being open the blinds being open I, and i said i saw like a lot of people in the backyard um walking past or riding past in their little on the little lawnmower i said i saw the men and the woman in the back of the lawnmower with her wedding dress on the lord how to me many will see okay the people all around outside looking in and he led me to Ruth for 11 for chapter 4 verse 11 but the light shining through is also god's glory the blessings being shown upon you and being put on the slate and so you may be private and you should keep in your business and your personal things private but there may be a public aspect of your union this is not to say that like all your business is going to be on the forefront but a public again this kind of goes back to my last word that i released like a public show a public showing forth when it comes to your union when it comes to yeah your union and these marriages but it's for the glory of god the, the glory of God that is shining through upon your union, the newness, the restoration, or whatever your testimony is, um, the Lord is going to show you off using this union, your testimony, whatever you two will be birthing together, and it's going to be for his glory. So there there is going to be an aspect of publicity or, or a public, um, you being in the spotlight when it comes to your union. Be prepared for that as well, if that is for you. But like I said, that scripture was Ruth 4, chapter 4, verse 11 and all the people who were at the gate and the elders said we are witnesses the lord make this woman who was coming to your house like rachel and leah the two shall build the house of israel and may you prosper in ephrathah and be famous in bethlehem so there is a lot in this word take what's for you and leave the rest but if this is for you then this whole word is going to be for you um I believe the whole word is going to be for you. And so take this word back to the Lord and test the spirit behind this word. If you know anyone who you feel need to hear this word, feel free to share this word with them, the goodness of this word. Also, the instruction that comes in this word and the reassurance that comes in this word. I pray that this word blessed you guys. I pray that it uplifted your spirits and it gave you some encouragement to continue on in this walk. If this is for you, I would just recommend going go ahead and, and just meditating on the entire book of Ruth. Don't forget to set the spirit behind this word. Take this word back to the Lord for confirmation to speak to you further concerning your individual situation. Um, to confirm if this is for you and of course as always make sure that you are aware of the season that you are in don't forget to like comment and subscribe to the channel if you're new here and hit that notification bell so that you're notified of any future uploads when i post and i'll be back soon with another word bye